This video will guide you through filing a basic online sales and use tax return. The information in this video is for illustration purposes only and is not considered specific tax advice for you or your business. It does not address all the lines of the sales and use tax return. If you have specific questions about the return, refer to the Form E-500 instructions on the website or call the department for assistance. If you need to file and or pay North Carolina sales and use tax, you can do it online at ncdor.gov. Once there, click Taxes and Forms. Then, click Sales and Use Tax. Next, click File and Pay E-500 on the right side of the page. Note, there are multiple ways to access the filing and paying option for a North Carolina sales and use tax return. Before we get started, let's take a moment and review the help feature that can be found on this page. Within this document, you will find assistance and common questions that you might have when filing a sales and use tax return electronically. For example, it will assist you in selecting the correct filing option, as well as line-by-line -line guidance on completing a sales and use tax return, Form E-500. Once the online file and pay page loads, enter contact name, use the person's name that is filing on behalf of the business or taxpayer, then enter the contact email address. Use the email address that you would like your sales and use return confirmation sent to. Finally, enter contact phone number. Use a working phone number that you can be reached at in case there are questions referencing your account. Then click Next. Enter the account ID you were given when you completed the business registration form with the department. In most cases, it will start with a six and is nine digits. Then click Submit. If you don't know or can't find your account ID, then call the department. Once you hit Submit, verify the business and account information listed is correct. Once verified, click Next. Do not input your sales account ID again unless your business name is not listed here. To file and pay the business's sales and or use tax liability, select the first option. To submit a zero tax return, select the third option. Note, you would select this option if you do not have receipts to report or if you had non-taxable receipts to report. On rare occasions, you might be contacted by the department to submit payment only, which would be the fourth option. Once you have made your selection, click Next. For our example, we are going to select File E500 and pay the full amount online. Input the period ending date for the return you are filing. Our online filing system is set up to use period ending dates that correlate with the filing status you selected upon registering your business with the department. If you are a monthly filer, you will see 12 possible period ending dates based on the months for which you could be reporting for. If you are a quarterly filer, you will see four possible period ending dates based on the quarter for which you could be reporting for. For our example, we will use 83120, which will be indicative of a monthly filer. After you have selected the period ending date, then enter your Social Security number or FEIN and click Next. Complete the applicable lines for your sales and use liability. Use tax is reported under the Purchases for Use column. Sales tax is reported under the Receipts column. The current tax rates in Durham County and Mecklenburg County are 7.5% and 7.25% respectively. These receipts are also subject to transit tax due to the counties they are in. Both Durham and Mecklenburg counties are required to collect transit tax of 0.5%. The transit tax is included in the total tax rate for each county, but will be broken out when completing these forms. You will see this breakdown demonstrated as you move forward through the video. It is common for a business to have sales in multiple counties within North Carolina. For this example, the business operates a t-shirt company based in Durham County, but also had online sales from Mecklenburg County. Enter the total amount of gross receipts not including tax collected, into line one. 
This example is $28,382.32 in sales in Durham County and $4,000 for sales in Mecklenburg County, totaling $32,382.32, which has been added to line 1. For this example, all receipts are subject to the general rate of tax. Enter the amount of receipts subject to the general state rate on line 4. This example is 32,382.32 in total sales. 32,382.32 will be multiplied by the general state rate 4.75% automatically once you click in another box or press the tab button. The gross amount of sales made in Mecklenburg County will be entered on line 9 since Mecklenburg County has a 2% county rate. $4,000 will be entered in the receipts column and multiplied by the 2% county rate automatically. The gross amount of sales made in Durham County will be entered on line 10 since Durham County has a 2.25% county rate. 28,382.32 will be entered in the receipts column and multiplied by the 2.25% county rate automatically. The gross amount of sales made in both Durham and Mecklenburg County are subject to the 0.5% transit rate, so you would enter 32,382.32 in receipts on line 11. Note, you will need to know the amount of county tax under the tax column on lines 9, 10, and 11 to complete the Form E-536 County Breakdown. You will want to write these numbers down so you have them for the next page. The total amount of tax liability will be automatically calculated and is totaled on line 13, line 15, and line 21. After you have calculated your total on line 21, click Next. Enter in the amount of county tax owed to each county in the applicable column. The county tax amount for sales received in Durham County will be entered on line 32 in column 2 and 3. From the example, line 2 will be 638.60 due to 28,382.32 times 2.25% and line 3 is 28,382.32 times 0.5%, which equals 141.91. The county tax amount for sales received in Mecklenburg County will be entered on line 60 in columns 1 and 3. From the example, line 1 will be $80 due to 4,000 times 2%, and line 3 will be $20 due to 4,000 times 0.5%. Click Next to continue. You have the option of submitting a payment via credit card or bank draft. For credit card transactions, we accept Visa or MasterCard. There is a $2 convenience fee for every $100 increment of tax. For our example, we will use a bank draft pay selection. There is not a fee for bank draft payments. You will need a bank routing number, bank account number, and the bank account type to complete the transaction. Note the information in red on the screen regarding the use of savings and money market accounts. You will need to check with your bank to confirm these types of accounts can be automatically drafted. We will enter the routing number, the account number, and then click business slash corporate checking, and then the payment is automatically entered for us. Please also note the draft date. This date will default to the earliest date possible to have the draft occur. When the due date falls on a weekend or holiday, it will automatically change to the next business day. If you are making payments that are not notice payments, that date can be changed. However, please note that if you extend the date beyond your regular due date, penalties and interest can occur. Re-enter your bank account number for verification purposes. Note, do not copy and paste this number to eliminate errors. 
Verify all the information you've entered is correct before submitting. Once the information is verified, select Submit. You should now see the confirmation number displayed on the screen. You will want to keep this number for your records. You will receive email confirmation within two business days. This will be sent to the same email address you provided at the beginning. Still have questions about filing or want to learn more about sales and use tax? Attend one of our free virtual sales and use tax webinars or view the Sales and Use Tax 101 e-module.